Okay, this is module 27, part two. So this example is the sum difference and product of two functions. One function is s of t, 4x squared. The other function is t of x, um, s of x and t of x, which is x cubed. And they want us to find the product, the difference, and the sum, but this one they want us to evaluate it for a particular x value. So let's first figure out how we do the general one. So it helps if you change this notation into its equivalent notation, which is s of x times t of x. Then it's just a matter of plugging in the expression for s of x and plugging in the expression for t of x. s of x is equivalent to this expression. So instead of s of x, I'm going to plug in the expression 4x squared. T of x is equal to this expression, x cubed. So for T of x, I'm gonna plug in the expression x cubed. And then we need to simplify. So 4x squared times x cubed is actually 4x to the fifth. And that is what we get for the product. For the difference, it's the same thing, rewrite it so that you have s x minus t of x and s of x is 4x squared t of x is x cubed and it is very important that when you plug it in that you keep parentheses especially if this say this term had more than just one this uh, expression had more than one term in it you would have to distribute that minus and that's apparent if the parentheses are there but if the parentheses are not there, you're likely to make the mistake of not distributing the minus and then therefore not getting the correct answer. So please make sure when you plug in your expressions for those functions that you use parentheses at first and then you can later decide if you need them or not. So here I do not have a coefficient and I do not have a power, so I do not need this particular set of parentheses. And here, if I take minus times an x cubed, I get minus x cubed. And so this is simplified as far as it can be simplified because those terms are not like terms. The last thing we need to do is evaluate s plus t2. So just like we wrote this into their function notations, we're gonna do the same thing here. But notice that this time, you're plugging in a two, not the general x. So what that means is 2 has to get plugged into s first, and then 2 has to get plugged into t first, and once I'm done, I can add those two things together. So what do I get if I plug in 2 into s? I would get 4 times 2 squared. What would it look like if I plug 2 into t? It would be 2 cubed. And then now I need to actually evaluate what those expressions look like before I can add them together. So here, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 4 is 16, and that's all I need. Here, 2 cubed is 8. And I can actually add these two together, and I end up with 24. So the final evaluation of that expression is just 24. So when you're plugging in a number here, you should end up with a numerical answer. When you're plugging in x's, you should end up with expressions with x. Now let's go on to the quotient. So this topic says the quotient, g of x is equal to x plus three, f of x is equal to x minus six times x plus six. They want us to find g of f of Again, let's rewrite that. It's g of 2 over f of 2. So then that means I need to plug in 2 into g. What does that look like? It looks like 2 plus 3. And I need to plug in 2 into f. So 2 minus 6 and 2 plus 6. And then what do we end up with? We end up with 5 in the numerator. We have negative 4 times 8 in the denominator which gives us 5 over negative 32, or just negative 5 over 32. So that is the expression evaluated at 2. Part B says, find all the values that are not in the domain of f of g. 
So remember what we need to do for that. We need to figure out where does this function equal zero, okay? So where does x minus six times x plus six equal zero? Well, you set each factor equal to zero, so you get x minus six equal to zero and x plus six equals zero. Here you would add six to both sides, so you get x equals six. Here you would minus six to both sides and you get x equals negative six. So the two values that are not in the domain are going to be six and negative six since those will cause f to equal zero. Here we are doing the quotient of two functions advanced. So they still want us to find g over f, but they also want us to find its domain, and we need to put that domain in interval notation. So g over f means you're going to have g of x on top of f of x, and they want us to simplify it. So that means this fraction on top of this fraction. Okay? Then if I rewrite that, it's the same as saying seven over x plus nine divided by six over x. And we know that with fractions, when you divide, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So really the expression we have here is 42 over x times x plus nine, or 42 over x squared plus nine x, okay? Now, it wants us to find the domain in interval notation. Well, to do that, this is what we need to find. The domain of G over F is going to be the domain of G intersect with the domain of F, but take out any values that make that denominator equal to zero. So, so the domain of G, since it's a fraction, we would have to take this denominator and set it equal to, say that the denominator cannot equal zero, which means that x cannot equal negative nine. How do I write that in interval notation? That is um, negative infinity to negative nine, and then negative nine to infinity. Um, in a graph, I would draw it as, here's negative nine and there's a hole there and then everything is shaded in, okay? Now for the domain of F, this denominator cannot equal zero, which basically means X cannot equal zero. Um, zero would be to the right of nine, so let's just say there. And so I would have a hole there and I would have everything else shaded because the domain of F is negative infinity to zero and then from zero to infinity everything but zero, right? How do I find the intersection of these two graphs, okay? The intersection means you basically put them together, okay? So anything that is missing from this graph is also going to be missing from this graph, okay? So if I put these two together, notice that not only am I gonna be missing negative nine, I'm also gonna be missing zero. And so this becomes the domain of um, G intersect the domain of F. However, I still have to take out anything. I still have to remove. I may have to put some more holes in here. Anything that makes F equal to zero. Well, let's look at that. When is F equal to zero? When is six over X equal to zero? If you multiply both sides by the denominator, you end up getting six equals zero because zero times any number is zero. And this is frankly not true, right? Six does not equal zero. So you don't get any solutions from trying to set F equal to zero. What that means is there's no additional points to remove from this interval. Therefore, this interval is in fact my domain. I just have to write it in interval notation. So it's going to be from negative infinity to negative 9, from negative 9 to 0, and then from 0 to infinity. Okay.
Okay. The next topic is combining functions advanced. So here they want us to add and multiply, but then they also want us to give them their domains. So if I want to do f plus g of x, that means I need to take f of x and I need to add g of x, which means I need to take this expression and need to add this expression. And you'll notice that in this case, there's no need for this parentheses and there's no need for that parentheses. And I cannot simplify that any further. So this is the expression that I would type in for f plus g. Now for f times g, I'm going to have the expression for f of x times the expression for g of x. So I'm going to have 4x squared plus 1 times square root of x minus 4, 5x minus 4. Now here, I could distribute if I wanted to, or I could leave it like that. Alex will accept either one. So Alex will accept 4x squared times 5x minus 4 plus 1 times 5x minus 4, or just don't put the 1. It will also accept... Um, just 4x squared plus 1 times the square root of 5x minus 4. Since you don't need the parentheses because the bracket kind or the square root kind of already makes it its own grouping mechanism, keeping it together separate from the 4x squared plus 1. So these are it. This is all I need to write for the product and for the sum. But I also need to give the domains. Now remember how we do the domains. The domain of both of these is going to be the same, and that's going to be the domain of f intersected with the domain of g. So, let's see. What is the domain of f? f is just a quadratic function. The domain of a quadratic function is negative infinity to infinity. Okay? And the domain of g is a square root. That's special because we know that square roots the insides can only be positive, which means that 5x minus 4 has to be greater than or equal to 0. It has to be a positive number that I can take the square root of, or it has to be 0, which I can also take the square root of. So if I start solving this for x, I get that x has to be greater than or equal to 4 fifths. Now how do we write that in interval notation? Here's four fifths. This would be a solid dot shaded to the right. And in interval notation, that would be a bracket four fifths to infinity. So how do we write where these two things overlap? Well, this is the domain of G. The domain of F is negative infinity to infinity. So everything is shaded on F. But we need to find the intersection, which means we can only put in the final answer what both of these two people have, okay? And if you notice, they both share this region. So that is the only region that can be included in the intersection. So it's gonna be from that four fifths with a solid dot, because it's solid here and it's solid there. So it's included in both. And then the right-hand side is included in both of those graphs. So the domain of F plus G is going to be 4 fifths to infinity and we know that the domain of f times g is the exact same thing um, 4 fifths to infinity okay here we are going into the composition now so this is where you plug one into the other and so they've given us our two functions q of x and r of x and they're saying find the value q of r of negative 5 Remember with your orders of operations, they always tell you to work from the inside parentheses out. So here, there's nothing to compute inside there. It's already down to just one number. However, I do have to compute this, which is r of negative 5. To do that, I would have to plug negative 5 into the r function. And then that would be negative 15 plus 3, which is negative 12. Notice that the Q 
I haven't done anything with the cube, so I'm just bringing that down. Okay. Then now I work what's what what's here. Well, this means plug negative 12 into Q. So I'm going to take negative 3 times negative 12 minus 3. That's 36 minus 3, which is 33. And that's all I needed to do with this expression. Therefore, we are done. Here is the composition of two functions. Again, um, the same thing. They just wrote it like this instead of this notation but it means the same thing so if you want and which you should rewrite this as p with q inside and negative 5 this one write q with p inside and the negative 5 so this means i have to plug negative 5 into q first so let's do that negative negative 5 squared minus 1 Let's figure out what we get in there. That's going to be positive 25, but this minus came down. So I get P of negative 26. And if I plug negative 26 into P, I get negative 26 minus 2. Now remember, once you're plugging this number into this function, you no longer need to be writing that letter because you've done what that letter represents to do. And I get negative 28. So I get negative 28 for P of Q. Now they swap it around and notice that it will be different. Sometimes coincidentally you could get the same, but usually not. So I'm going to plug in negative 5 into P this time. So I'll keep my Q out there. And I'm going to plug negative 5 minus 2. So I get negative 7. And then negative 7 is going to go into Q. And when I plug in that negative 7, I no longer write the letter Q. This minus is going to come down. Negative 7 times negative 7 is a positive 49 minus 1. So negative 49 minus 1 is negative 50. And again, notice that those are not the same, right? So here we have composition of a function and itself. And here we don't have to find the domain. That's nice. Um, but we do need to find f of f. So that means f on the outside and f of x on the inside. So I'm going to put a giant f here for this f. And for the inside, I'm going to use the expression for f of x, which is 7 over x. Then I'm going to plug this expression into the f function, which means this is the f function. And instead of x, I'm going to be plugging in this expression, which is 7 over x. And we already know that that's the same as saying 7 divided by 7 over x, or 7 times x over 7. These actually end up reducing, and I just end up with x there. Coincidence, really. Now let's find g of g. So g on the outside, and this g on the inside. So instead of g of x on the inside, we're going to put the expression for g of x, which is x squared minus 8. So since g is on the outside, we're going to write the expression for g. But instead of using an x, we're going to put a big giant parenthesis. So for this function, I'm just writing a big giant parenthesis squared minus 8. What goes inside this parenthesis? Whatever's inside that parenthesis. So in there will be x squared minus 8. Now I do have to simplify this one. So it does mean x squared minus 8 times itself. And then you have a big minus 8 onto the side. So I get x to the fourth minus 8x squared minus 8x squared plus 64. And then again minus this 8. So I get x to the fourth minus 16x squared. And 64 minus 8 is going to be a positive 56. And this is the expression you write for g of g. Here it says expressing function as a composition of two functions. So they're giving us a function and they basically want to know what was f and g before they plug g into f. Um, so my biggest tip is if there are parentheses or any kind of grouping mechanism already in the problem itself, then you already have G, um, you already have G found. 
And then it's just a matter of replacing that whatever's in the parentheses or the grouping mechanism with an X to figure out what F is, okay? So I have four examples here and I want to actually talk about this one because this is one of those ones that are the easier ones to identify. So I obviously see 5X plus 7 inside a parentheses, which means, remember, this is your outside function and this one is your inside function. So since I see five of x plus seven inside a parentheses, that tells me that my inside function is five x plus seven. Then if I wanna figure out what f of x is, I just imagine that this is just a big giant x, right? So it becomes x to the third power. And then how do you check your answer? If you were to plug this expression into x for f, would you get h of x? And I would in this particular case. The other one that's easy to identify is this example down here. Notice that 2x minus 1 is clearly inside the square root. So this right here is going to be my inside function, g of x. And then my f of x is going to be Replace that with the giant x, so square root of x. And if I were to stick this g function into the f function instead of in replacing the x, I would get what I had for h of x. What's harder is these two examples. There are no parentheses. And the biggest hint I can tell you is that you can never, 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 never in these problems, never let g of x equal x. You cannot do that. Otherwise, you're not even talking about a composition function at all. You're just talking about the function and that's it. It has to be something else other than just x. So the question is, is can I put a parentheses around something? And this problem actually has two different answers, okay? Because I could choose, let me write the problem out twice just so you can see that your choice of where you put that parentheses could get you a two different solutions that are both correct. So one thing I could do is I could put my parentheses here. And if I put my parentheses around that, that means that my inside function is gonna be six squared of x. But if I replace that with a giant x, my outside function is just gonna be x minus one. But neither one of these are just an x by themselves, so that is perfectly okay as a solution. However, if I come over here and I do it again, and let's say I decide to put my, you cannot put parentheses around here, because that would mean that the six is supposed to be multiplied by the one. And if you're looking at this expression, the six is not being multiplied by one. So what I can do, you can put the parentheses around that since that is being multiplied by six. Then that clearly lets you see that g of x is the inside, which is the square root of x. Then f of x would be as if I replace this with a big giant x, and now I have six x minus one, okay? So the second, this next example, it's the last one I have in this um, topic. It can also be worked out the same way. So I'm gonna rewrite it again twice. And so it just depends on how you're visualizing it. Are you visualizing it like this or are you visualizing it like that? Here, g of x is 2x to the 6 plus 3, while f of x is a big giant x plus 3. And here, g of x is equal to x to the 6, and f of x is equal to 2x plus 3. Both of those answers are completely correct. So you type in whichever one you want and Alex will still answer mark it correct okay this topic is compositions of two functions domain and range and so it says find the domain and the range of f write the answers and set notation so basically what we need to do is we need to start off with each of these values and see where we end up okay remember f goes into G so once we figure out what the y value is, that y value will get plugged into g, and then we'll figure out where we land, okay? So let's trace it. I'm gonna start with one, five, 
six and seven. Those are all of our spots that we're gonna begin with, right? So one goes to four. Then four, as you notice, is not on this list at all. So it stops, it doesn't go anywhere else. Okay, now let's trace five. Five goes to eight. Eight is here and it goes to nine. Six goes to two. And then two goes to nine. Seven goes to eight. And eight goes to nine. So one is not part of the problem because it doesn't end up anywhere. My domain is going to be all of the x values that actually ended up somewhere. And in set notation, it just means you put the braces. So five, six, and seven are part of my domain. And my range would be all the places that I landed on, that I ended up with at the, at the very end, okay? And it just so happens that they're all the same value, so I only need to include that value once in the range, okay? You don't have repeated values when you're using set notation. It's just all the different values that you have. That's what goes in the set notation. How many times they appear is not important. Okay. How many times they appear here is not important. They should only appear in the set notation once. Okay. Here we're doing composition of two functions advanced. Now, I when we talked about it in the video one, I said that finding the domain of these guys is a little bit trickier. The biggest trick with this is you should find the domain before you simplify it. So they do want you to simplify these expressions, but before you simplify it, go find the domain, okay? So this one means to take G and plug in H of X. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write my G function but instead of writing x, I'm just going to have a big giant gap. And I may have written that too big. Let me s <laughs> make it a little bit smaller so I can have room to do the rest of everything I need to do. But, so this is going to be x minus 6 over x minus three. So I've written out g, but instead of x, I left the inside blank. Now I'm gonna take the inside function and plug it in where there was an x. So I'm gonna put in four x minus five here and four x minus five there. Now before I simplify this, we need to talk about the domain, okay? We know that when we have fractions, your denominator cannot equal zero, which means 4x minus 5 minus 3 cannot equal zero. Or 4x minus 8 cannot equal zero. If I add 8, I get 4x cannot equal 8. If I divide by 4, I get x cannot equal 2. What does that look like in interval notation? It's negative infinity to two, and then two to infinity. Okay, so this is the domain. We've got that down. Now let's go simplify this expression. So four x minus five minus six over four x minus five minus three. That gives me four x minus 11 over four x minus eight. Now notice, that if I were to have done the domain after I simplified, I would basically be here and I would end up with the same exact answer. That is pure coincidence, okay? Because it doesn't always happen that way. So don't start thinking that you can just simplify and then find the domain. You will not get the correct domain every single time. Sometimes you might, but then other times you won't and you'll start getting frustrated with why you're not getting it correct, okay? So let's do this one. Let's see what that looks like. So again, G on the outside, H of X on the inside. So G is here. So I'm gonna write something squared plus three. And what is that something? H of X is that something. So square root of X plus two. 
Now, before I simplify that, I need to go look at the domain. I have a square, which just means a polynomial. The domain of polynomials is infin negative infinity to infinity. So that's not a problem. But what is the problem is the square root. We know that the inside of a square root has to be greater than or equal to zero, which means that x has to be greater than or equal to negative two, which means negative two to infinity is the domain. So we have the domain Let's go simplify this. What happens when you square a square root? The um, square and the square root just cancel each other out and you just get x plus two. If I combine my like terms, I get x plus five. Now, look at this. If I were to have taken the domain here, after I simplified, the domain of a line is negative infinity to infinity. But if you notice, my correct domain is not negative infinity to infinity, okay? So it is very important when you're doing the composition of functions and they ask you for the domain that you take the domain before you simplify it. That is the trick. Find the domain before you simplify it. Okay, this is the last uh, problem in this module. So it says a word problem involving composition of two functions. The surface area, S of R, in square meters of a spherical balloon with radius R meters is given by S of R 4 pi times R squared. The radius P of T in meters after, in meters after T seconds is given by this expression. Write a formula for the surface area N of T in square meters of the balloon after T seconds it is not necessary to simplify. So they want an expression for n of t. What they want us to do actually is plug one of these functions into the other, okay? Now since t needs to be inside the parentheses, that gives me the hint that my expression with the t is the one that's going to get plugged inside the other expression. So basically what I need to do is I need to do not S of R, but S of P of T. So I need to plug in this right there. And if you actually compute that, that would be four pi R squared, right? You write the outside function and instead of your variable, you put a big giant parentheses. And then the other guy is what goes in that parentheses. So four thirds T. And they said we did not to simplify this so this should be perfectly fine as the answer.